Hello everyone, my name is Rex Buckles and today I'm going to be talking to you about someone who has greatly impacted your life and you may not even know it. And that man's name is Alan Turing. Now, I'm going to be specifically covering Alan Turing's code breaking machine which he designed in World War II and its effect on modern computing. But to start, I'm just going to talk a little bit on who Alan Turing was. As a child, Alan Turing was much like you and I. He went to school, had friends, and he had classes, some of which he excelled in, and others he did not do so well. One area in which he struggled was with the language arts, such as English and French, but he did particularly well in mathematics. And this mathematical prominence enabled him to garner the title as the father of computer science, which can be predominantly drawn to three main inventions of his. The first of which is the Turing machine, which is highly theoretical, and we can see a professor teaching on the theory here. This machine can be physically built, but the theory behind it, it is, is what has maintained prominence and been so influential in computer science. He's also famous for the Turing test, which is a test designed to tell artificial intelligence from human intelligence. It involves one human speaking to another known human and then the potential artificial intelligence. And the human asks them both a series of questions in order to ascertain if the second one really is a human or if it is AI. This proves very successful, identifying easily the strong majority of AIs with the only exception being ChatGPT which it was considered a landmark in AI when ChatGPT passed the Turing test, and it has been the only AI to do so. Another thing of note is it does not do so consistently, but it can do it on occasion. The last invention that has really cemented Turing and his notoriety, positive notoriety, is his bomb machine, which is named after the Polish word bomba, which means to crack open, and is a reference to cracking open code. This machine broke the Germans' code in World War II and as a result is estimated to have saved millions of lives. Now looking at Alan Turing's life and legacy and all that he was able to accomplish, it may surprise you to learn that he died when he was quite young. This is because at the age of 39, he was publicly outed as being homosexual. And this outing led to extreme societal pressure, which led to anxiety and depression, and the British government even labeled him as a criminal, ultimately resulting in him committing suicide by eating a cyanide-laced apple two years later. And so this really leads one to wonder what more he would have been able to accomplish. But really seeing all that he did, one thing sticks out to me, and that's that his Turing test is considered foundational in AI. The Turing machine is foundational in computer science, but the bomb machine is not given very much credit as being foundational in any regard to computer science. And this leads to the core of my research, which I sought to ascertain how the bomb machine influenced our modern computer science. And in order to answer this, I first want to establish the true prominence that the Turing machine has. As can be seen here in this image, the Turing machine consists of two reels, which come together in the middle with what is known as the head. These two reels contain information of an algorithm, and then the head performs said algorithm. This machine is very simple, and that's actually why it's so important. It's because it can hypothetically perform any algorithm. It's not efficient, it's not practical, practical but it can. And that's what really matters, is that something so simple can do something so complicated. And that leads the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy to call it foundational in the theory of computer science, as can be seen from this quote here. And this also led Stephen Hawking to call Turing one of the most brilliant mathematicians of the modern era. But looking beyond quotes and this hypothetical nature, where can we really see this theory utilized? Well, one area we can see it is with NVIDIA's graphics cards. NVIDIA, in their most recent iterations of their graphics cards, uses Turing-based architecture. And this Turing-based architecture enables what is known as real-time ray tracing. 
What real-time ray tracing does is it enables light to bounce like it would from the sun. So there's one central light object, and it beams down light. And differing materials have different levels of reflection from the light. For example, a metallic shiny object would reflect a lot, whereas a dull kind of matte surface or cloth surface would reflect much less light. And we can see from this image here, the picture on the left does not have ray tracing, and the picture on the right does. And we can really see a stark difference in the level of detail of the shading. But now that we've established some of the Turing machine and all it's been able to influence, what has the bomb machine done? Well, we first must understand why the bomb machine was created and why it was very important. And the bomb machine was created to crack the code of the Germans' Enigma machine, which can be seen here. And because of this, it was highly consequential in the war. This Enigma machine was used to transmit and code all forms of messages that the Germans used. They considered it to be impossible to crack, and the British government also originally thought it would be impossible to crack. This is because the machine has a cipher of randomizing characters, and then after it randomizes those characters, with every single key press, it randomizes to a new cipher once again, with there being 50, 60 different ciphers that it alternates from. So really, even if these messages were to get intercepted, all the, British would all the Brits would have to go off of is just a random garbled mess of characters. But they still decided to hire a team of mathematicians, one of whom was Alan Turing, to crack this. And Turing designed the bomb machine, which brute forces its way through every single possible cipher. It starts with the first positioning ciphers, and it goes through trying to form each letter sequentially until it's clear that the sentence or word doesn't make sense. After the machine sees that this cannot be the case, it then goes on to trying the next combination. Because of this, not only was it consequential in the war, but it also became highly influential in cryptography. And the methods that were used then are still practiced today, and variations of it are still used in the most advanced forms of modern cryptography. But beyond this, with how we actually use our computers in our everyday life, it's rarely credited. But I think that there's a good case to be made that it should be credited with more influence than it has. And in order to explain this, I'm going to make an analogy and draw a parallel to something that may seem quite odd. And this parallel is to the video game modern video game industry. And now, the game Doom was released in 1993, and it was the first ever of a genre known as first-person shooters. This genre is still present and is currently the most popular genre of game. A couple years later, the game Quake was released, which was considered little more than a Doom clone. It improved on it in some aspects, such as better graphics, but again, it had to live inside Doom's shadow. However, Quake was soon modded, and this modification became its own game, known as Half-Life. And Half-Life not only moved out of the shadow of Quake, being a mod of it, but it also moved out of the shadow of Doom entirely as well, and is generally considered to be the first modern PC game. And the reason for this attribution comes from the fact that it has a fully developed story with character development, and it really brings everything together in a way of consequence that the aforementioned games did not. But how does this relate to Alan Turing? Well, much like Doom, the Turing machine is highly foundational, with the Turing machine being foundational in computer science and Doom establishing a genre of game. Whereas the bomb machine uses Turing's genius and his work to create a practical, real application. The, um, much the same way, Half-Life uses what Doom established in order to create what is considered to be the first modern video game. And another thing to know about Turing and the Turing machine is that it wasn't widely popularized. And especially after the death of Turing, he was held as a criminal. And because of him being held as a criminal, he wasn't able to maintain the credibility for his Turing machine to really be utilized. But the bomb machine coming after, showing what Turing was really able to do, was able to cement Turing and show people that he really was capable of a lot, 
and that he really had good moral fiber as well. And because of this, the credibility established from the bomb machine is necessary for Turing's Turing machine to have had the same implications as it does today. And this really goes to how we define influence, because a lot of the times we define it quite linearly. For example, the Turing machine is theoretical and re relates to computer science, therefore it influences the theory of computer science. But even though the bomb machine didn't necessarily directly influence it in the same way, it still clearly has grand implications on overall computer science because it enabled the Turing machine to become popularized and utilized. Here are my references, and I would also like to give a special thank you to Metzli Diaz for helping with my slide design. Thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content from LSC Kingwood.